Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Dan Old School Green with again my college football expert, Dan Ring at CFB Ring Zone. We are the Heat Ratio Sports Network. Again, as always, please check us out on YouTube, subscribe, tap the bell, and that will inform you of great programming when it happens live. So, this is going to be our NFL draft recap. We're literally a week as we do this. It's Thursday. It's a week from when the draft took place. And Dan had two spot on shows we did together. Part one was on the offense. Part two is on the defense. And before we get into the recap, I do want to throw kudos to Dan. I said to him, Crystal Ball, you're the Eagles. Who are their two draft picks? He said, Jordan Davis. And was it Traylon Burks? Yep. And Burks was the guy sitting there for the Titans once the Eagles made the A.J. Brown trade. So Burks went right in that spot. So kudos to Dan. We shouted him out on our Heat Ratio live show. And I want to do it on the draft show because this is where essentially he said it. So, Dan, before we um, get into Eagle specific, because we are an Eagle-centric show. We are Philadelphia-based. Let's give us uh, give the viewers, even the Eagles fans, your general overview of the draft, maybe players that you were shocked went where they did, players both high or low, teams that you thought did really well. Just just your general overview of how you th- thought things played out. Okay. Um, so before I get into that, I'll give my obligatory shout out to Tony Cotillo, uh, our master and mentor and my mentor, personal mentor, you, Dan Old School Green. Uh, make sure you tune in for Dan's short takes, two minute takes, um, which I think you're going to rename two minute, uh, two minute drill. Well, my no, my <laughs> my my two minute takes are turning out to be five to eight minutes, but right. whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. Short always takes, great content. Short take. Always great content and programming and thought provoking subject. So, um, that being said, the draft uh, I think went along what most people thought, including myself. Um, a few surprises as there are every year. I, I think the biggest surprise was probably Dean going to the Eagles and popping in their lap at 83. Um, I don't even really truly understand that because if he had an injury to his pec, and that was the whole reason for the drop, and teams knew about that, in all the mock drafts, he was still going in the first round. So something happened between Thursday and, and Friday when he was chosen. To think to either scare teams off or the Eagles bluffed a lot of teams because I think there were people were trying to um, work their way around and figure how they want to get him in the third round. Um, but it was just interesting how it all, especially with him, turned out because I think he was in uh, Vegas for the sh- for the draft. Now let me ask you: Did he try did he out he at the combines? I mean, did he do all the drills at the combines, the bench press, or did he bail out? Of he didn't do the, no, he bailed out. He didn't do the bench press. So maybe his I pec think, was sore. It was, and he. I think he did the running drills because I think he ran like a four five, or four like a four five five, something like that. So he was plenty quick enough. There were always questions about his size. So I think they, with his size combined with this injury, and he's had some nicks and bruises through the through the years anyway. Um, I think it scared teams off, and and I think a lot of teams medical uh, personnel said that he was going to need surgery. And I know how he went back to the Eagles personnel three or four times right before the pick and said, "Tell me." quickly what you think and they kept reassuring him that he doesn't need surgery and it's not a career altering injury um he's going to need to recover or probably spend the summer recovering they have their mini camp tomorrow for rick- rookies and he'll be there um so i don't know how much he's going to do but i thought that was the most interesting aspect of the draft everything else pretty much went you know there were the usual trades but everything else went pretty much according to what we said you know willis went in the third round um pickett was the only quarterback chosen in the first round by the steelers still think he's overrated i don't see him having a a big impactful career um but as far as the eagles i think it was great they had a great draft they walked they went in with 10 picks they came out with five picks and an all pro wide receiver Um, and and universally you know i think the grades that i saw would be plus to a minus across the board oh i think i I think i think they did uh, got an a uh, they got because they got they also got some picks for next year. Yeah, so they have they have, they do have um, assets and capital for potential future trades. And before we go on to the Eagles um, picks, as you referenced, another quick 
player I believe that you nailed was Bailey Zappi, who was your featured quarterback in your show. You projected him to go around the third round, and yeah. I believe I believe that's where he went to New England. Yes. Uh, they look at him as a project and a lot of potential and, and, and that kind of offense that Belichick runs. Going to be a good backup to Mac Jones. They're very similar type of players. Zappi's probably a better pure passer. Doesn't have the experience, obviously, that Mac Jones has, but um, in the third round, he's a really good pick, and he'll certainly be able to fill in, maybe not this year, but in the future, uh, as, a, as a really good backup. All right. Let's uh, <laughs> hit on the Eagles now. I'm going to pull up okay. the graphic, and we'll go over the draft class. And what actually excites me nearly as much is the UDFAs. I, I always try to jump on the computer and find out who's, draft, who's uh, signed where and which players that had – decent draft grades fell out of the draft and and right. the Eagles picked up some nice players as we'll discuss shortly. And there's always one or two guys that stand out um, that make the team uh, that you wouldn't expect. And especially this year, the Eagles have a lot of opportunity in the uh, defensive backfield. So they, yeah. they picked up four UDAs for uh, either safety or corner. Um, so that'll be an interesting, uh, interesting training camp. All right, so the, obviously the first draft for the Eagles was Jordan Davis, and I'm going to be on the record, and I and I hope I'm wrong. I you know when it comes to my teams, I love to eat crow. I don't want to ever stand on you know that I was right because I I want to be wrong, but I wanted Kyle Hamilton with this pick because my philosophy is I want a guy on the field all downs and is a playmaker, not a guy that's a rotational guy that only played 30% of snaps in college and that um, was often even pulled in third and short situations while in college. And he's a run stuffer. So you, why would a run stuffer, stuffer be called uh, pulled out on third and short? And he was a combine guy as far right. as he, he worked, he, he trained for the combine. And that's kind of what you, you, we pre-show you talked about late first round to the mid first round as a result of his, you know, combine performance. Right. I went, Kyle Hamilton kind of went in reverse because his, his uh, 40 time wasn't great, but he was a playmaker on the field. We disagree and it's okay, but I just want to be forthright, everyone. I wanted Kyle Hamilton, your overall thoughts, pre combine and post combine on Jordan Davis. Your thoughts are right on with him. I think he would have gone in the 20s if he didn't run like a like a linebacker at the combine with his size. So I think the Eagles and most teams, because Baltimore's going to take him at 14. They they telegraphed that. Um, they'd wanted him from very early on in the process. So the Eagles had to make a decision. They either trade up, you know, they gave up four picks, they gave up the 15th, they gave up a third rounder and two fourth rounders to get him. So I think he was a guy they had targeted and they wanted to make sure that Baltimore, since Baltimore stayed pat, they could jump them quick. Uh, and take Davis. And I think they feel they can coach him up. Um, Tracy Rockers, the defensive line coach, has a long uh, relationship with Davis. So um, they like they like his potential, and they see him as a, as a placement for Fletcher Cox next year because Fletcher Cox won't be back after this year. So they're willing to roll the dice with that. At the 13th pick, it's a good gamble. I mean, the guy's a monster. He's just huge. And if they can teach him some pass rush moves, they'll get his conditioning up a little bit. He probably could lose 10 to 15 pounds or – 50 um but you know he'll play at 330 or 340 and the guy's 6'6 he's not fat you know if you look at him he, how he fills out his uniform he's 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 doesn't have a belly hanging out um so i think he's got potential to really be become a disruptive force in the middle and they're willing to go with that the 13th pick you know for four other picks later on i think they feel is a good gamble so i, I was happy with it that's what i said they would do and, and that's what they did yeah and, and yeah. they stuck with their their philosophy whether we like it or not their philosophy is to build in the trenches and that's right. what they're doing so from that point of view they stuck with their conviction so right. and i know you don't like it because I, I, I don't i don't they, hate it i just would have gone a different direction. Well, I, they're not going to take a safety in the first round unless it's the end of the first round. I think what made it, they might have done is if Hamilton was there, if they stayed at 15 and Davis was gone, they would have tried to trade back and maybe sneak in Hamilton at like 2021. 20, maybe yeah, then they would yeah. have taken a flyer on him. But because he dropped so far anyway, I think most teams had the thought that 
they either don't value the safety position that much, which I agree with you. I don't understand. I think it's a really important spot, especially with a guy who can who can almost like a hero or a rover back who can go sideline to sideline. For me, he's the best he's best you. for me, he's the best he's safety coming out since hard. Derwin James. Okay. And, so, and and he might well be, but and that's why I, that's why I wanted him. So anyway, yeah. but they're, they're, it's not going to happen. And you know, we'll see. We'll see if Howie was proven right by by doing that. And and then the 18th. I I I don't. I should have had it up here because it was part of the part of the process. What what thrilled us all was the unbelievable value we got um, by trading 18 and the third round pick for an established stud wide receiver. Not a guy that you're projecting to be a stud, but a guy that has proven to be a stud in A.J. Brown. So essentially, number 18 is A.J. Brown. Um, your thoughts on that trade? Yeah, great trade. And, you know, if he was in this draft, he would have been a top, probably a top six or seven pick. He would have been the first wide receiver. Definitely would have gone ahead of Drake London, who I still think is going to be a bust in this league. But, um, yeah, it was great. I think he's had a little bit of an injury history. And obviously they've been talking for a while. He's good friends with Jalen Hurts. So to do that and have an extension signed that quickly, um, this was something that had been going on for a while. The Eagles just had to decide to pull the trigger on that. And and I think maybe Jamison Williams wasn't there because um, I think he went 11. And then they weren't going to take Olave because I don't think they wanted somebody who's similar to, to Smith and, and Bill. They wanted a bigger guy. So that's why I like Traylon Burks at that spot. And then they wound up trading – uh, and got a better deal with with Brown, so I think it's great. I mean, I, I think he wants to be here. He's got great chemistry with Hertz. He's going to be like a safety blanket for Hertz, who's still growing into that role as, as quarterback. So, uh, yeah, that's a home run. I think everybody pretty was much universal thinking that that was a great trade. I mean, Jameis Winston, Jameis, Jameis Winston, Jameson Williams went or Jameis Williams. I, I, I'm Jameson, Jameson Williams, the Alabama. Jameson, yeah, Jameson Williams. He went twelve. Twelve. Right. So there, there's. Big speculation that the Eagles were jumped by Detroit. Right. But would they have drafted Williams and they clearly had the deal with Brown? Would they have gone Williams Brown in the same draft or would that have no. the Browns? So they probably had no desire for Williams. No, I think once Williams was gone, they, they, the talks heated up for Brown because I think they wanted to get Williams. They would have had him on a rookie contract for four years. Right. Three years. And they obviously they're playing paying Brown hundred million dollars. So so once Williams was gone, if he was their target, then it was like, all right, we're going to make this trade because we we knew we could jump to get Davis at thirteen. So they got right. Davis and Brown, and, and Brown's only twenty four. So well, he'll be twenty five start of the season, but still young enough. Yeah. All right. So, so the the second the second round pick. Again, we all heard about them liking this kid. Um, the kid from Iowa went. Before before I even discuss my thoughts on this, how different, how dramatically different in skill set was Linda? Is it Linda Blom from Iowa? Lind Linderbaum, yeah. Linderbaum from Iowa, who went in the first round, and Jurgens, who was a second center taken. What's the skill set difference? Kelsey made it like this was the best center he saw in this right. draft. Is it just? talking points because that's where he fell or do they actually like him better than the Iowa kid? Well, he was the Iowa kid wasn't there. So that wasn't an option for them, but the Iowa kid probably a little more versatile. Um, Jurgens, they're very similar. They're about the same size. Actually, Jurgens never played anything but center. So they're not sure if he's powerful enough. And, and I, I gotta be honest. I didn't know a ton about him. I saw him play in college but he wasn't on most radars. Uh, the Eagles liked him because he had spent a lot of time with Kelsey and they see him as a Kelsey replacement. And he, he plays just like him because he's really athletic. He can really run um, and he's strong and he's nasty, but he's not a big, he, he's about 300 pounds. Maybe he's even a little bit under that, but he's never played anything but center. So the Eagles like to have their linemen versatile as we all know, and be able to play, you know, the interior guys have to play both guard positions and center and the tackles have to be able to swing. Um, he's not that guy. They're going to try to teach him to play some guard and get him on the field this year for that. But I think the Eagles look at this as, you know, we're going to redshirt him and he'll learn under Kelsey. Kelsey, and I, my opinion is he told the Eagles I'm playing this one year and that's it. So thanks, Nick Sirianni, for the keg of beer you gave me. You come back. But this is I'm done after this year. No, um, that, that makes sense. However, 
At, at 56, you probably could have gotten him in the third round. Right. And uh, and with the with Statland being such a great coordinator, you would think you can draft that guard center combo and convert him to center down the road with maybe a third or fourth round pick. However, as we talked pre show, if they had selected Nicobe Dean in that spot, which I kind of wanted them to, and then this kid was available at number three, I would have been completely fine with that. So that's right. how my mind is now looking at this is we got two guys that they wanted, but just to me, swap the rounds because that's really how it should have played out. Now, that transitions right into Nicobe Dean. Yeah. You referenced it earlier. Does your gut tell you there is indeed something wrong with him or false fear matriculated through the um, the the war rooms and the Eagles just benefited from nonsensical fear and rumor? My gut tells me there's something there. Every team doesn't pass on him twice, at least, I had a pick before the Eagles got him late in the third round. So two and a half teams, you know, times through teams passed on him. My gut tells me that with his skill level, there's something there. Now, the Eagles might have just said, you know what, we're targeting him in the third round. He's dropping this far. We can get him. We're going to take a risk and a flyer. And even if he has to have surgery and sits out a year or two, it's worth it. This is that kind of player. And we think that eventually he'll replace TJ Edwards and be in the middle of the defense. If they're willing to do that and wait for that, you know, look, he's got all the skill in the world. If he can stay healthy and, and, he, and he's sound and his shoulder's sound, um, then great. Then they got a steal in the third round. Um, he was talked up a ton on the draft show. Like Kuiper talked to Bob McShay. Everybody was was all over this kid. He was in the green room, I believe, in Las Vegas. You know, right. he, didn't, he thought he was going to be a first-round pick. So they know something. And whether he doesn't want to – he's obviously not going to admit it. It cost him, you know, tens of millions of dollars to be picked where he was. Um, but at 83, it's definitely a worthwhile pick. They're not going to take a linebacker that high anyway in the first round, probably not even the second round at 56. But if they were choosing between the two of them, and they obviously picked the center, they thought Dean would be there in the third round because they didn't try to trade up to take him. They, they, they used their own pick to take him. So my, my gut tells me something's up, and it wouldn't surprise me if he did eventually have surgery and maybe was out for a good portion of the year, but it's still well worth it at that spot to, uh, to pick up. No, I get that. <laughs> Ironically, other than A.J. Brown, we could have three guys <laughs> that really don't see the field a ton. So right. from that perspective, after the season gets rolling, you'll be like, oh, crap. You know, Jordan Davis is indeed a rotational guy with with uh, Hargrave and, right. and and Cox and, and company. And Jurgens, as you mentioned, right now is strictly a center and Kelsey's at that position. And, and if right. Dean is indeed hurt, our top three picks other than Davis don't really see the field a ton. Well, but if your philosophy is, and, and as I said, I'm the college football guy, so I look at recruiting, you recruit two or three years down the road. If your philosophy for the Eagles is we don't have any huge holes that we don't think we can fill either through later in the draft or, or a free agency or a trade here and there, then we can afford to wait a year or two for these guys to develop because we don't have any huge glaring needs. Now, I'm not saying that's the case. I think that's what they think. So they're yeah, willing they, to say, look, if, we, if we can get these guys even for round, for year two and they're on they're all they're both all three are gonna start, then they think they have a good a good draft. No, they I think they might maybe they don't think they have glare, glaring needs, but I think what they think is they're not a Super Bowl contender. So these guys will be like you said, if if Kelsey's done, Dean gets healthy, boom, they're our starters next year. And right. Then, and then and plus the next year's draft class as you reference with all the picks we have. Right. All right. So, so, so no, no, there's no doubt about it that Dean is worth um, the shot if he's indeed um, injured. But, um, you know, was it Mac from ja the Jaguars many years ago? Um, Miles My Jack, excuse me. Miles, Miles Jack. Jack. He had the same kind of injury right. reports and he's never missed a beat. Right. So sometimes there there isn't always, um, you know, smoke where there's fire and again i think it was an issue of look where a lot of the other linebackers went the inside linebackers not a position of value in the nfl you need yeah guys but lloyd also ran a slow and he was the only line. inside linebacker picked i think up until like the 50s right well I, didn't, uh, well didn't um quan walker go before him 
Quay Walker. No, Quay Walker. I think Quay Walker went in the second, like mid second round. Okay. So I, yeah, the only inside Lloyd went, I think, when he goes 25, something like that, or did he go earlier than that? Um, but he was the only inside linebacker in the first round because teams were looking for edge guys who can come off the edge, right? Guys who can run and cover, and and guys coming from the inside just aren't as valued because they they were almost boxed in. So you know, maybe you don't need a guy. They just don't look at NFL teams don't look at that as 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 uh, important as an now, outside guy or an edge rusher. All right. So quickly, right. number number six. Obviously, you don't expect a sixth round pick to necessarily make an impact. But that being said, I, when, it, when I was watching the draft, um, they traded two picks to get this guy. And every account that I read said that was nonsensical moves that he would have probably have been there when they drafted. And a lot of the grades on this guy for this particular pick was a C. So mm -hmm. I don't know what your thoughts on Kyron Johnson inside linebacker, similar size to Dean, but an right. edge rusher type, um, more like an, you know, uh, like Avery that we were probably going to, Jannard Avery, who's probably right. gone. Is so gone. thoughts on him? Um, you know, played in the Big 12. Uh, I think he led them, led the team in tackles. They like the way he can run. He's going to be a special teamer. They lost Singleton. I think they maybe look at him as kind of a similar guy that Singleton was the first couple of years. Um, and they're going to start with TJ Edwards, and they signed the kid White from uh, San Diego. Zero yeah, White, who's a placeholder for a year or two. So this guy, they look at like he's a Sean Bradley type from Temple that they got. Same kind of player. Maybe he'll maybe he'll work out. Maybe he won't. You have a sixth round pick on it. You know, they always trade fifth round and up. You're trading fifth, sixth, seventh round picks all the time. You're swapping. That you're taking a flyer on these guys. You might as well have an, an undrafted free agent at that spot. It doesn't really right. matter. It's just, but Cal Kater is a guy who the next guy who I, I did talk about, I believe. Yes. So uh, who I really like. So I thought that was great value. He's had some injuries, but you know, at 198 and a tight end, and he was he I thought he had a great season at Oklahoma before he transferred to SMU. But he's like a uh, not quite as big as Dallas Goddard, but he's I think he's gonna make the team. Um they have a bunch of tight ends. I think a couple guys are hurt. Um, so he could be in, on the opening day roster. I, I really like him. If he can stay healthy, I think that's a steal at one night. Well, the only issue with him is because, uh, you know, he, he had multiple concussions, retired from college football, and then right. came back. I think he's like a 24-year-old. So he's not uh, – he, he's basically coming back from a concussion hiatus. But yeah. as you said, he's very athletic, very productive. He has this skill set of a – of a round three, if not round two, right. tight end. But so again, you're taking a flyer at one ninety eight on six, and, and why not? Right, and I agree. And 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 Stoll's nothing to write home about. And um, the kid that they loved, I'm drawing a blank, who hurt his back, um, and then tore his knee. Yeah, the converted quarterback was a yeah, but he, he, who looked like he had brick hands. The couple yeah. throws that he right. were thrown his way before he tore up his knee, he looked terrible. I can't but, have Richard Rodgers again. It's no, 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 no. I, yeah, that 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 Mary has got to end. All right. Yeah. So as we referenced earlier, um, and we'll go through this quickly. Um, I I get a kick out of the UF UDFAs, the guys that um, preseason even were projected first, second rounders uh, during the draft were projected maybe third, fourth rounders. It just did not get called by anyone. And we want to, and and I do apologize. Um, when I initially put this list together, rumor had EJ Perry going to the Eagles. So Nick's EJ Perry off the list. He did not sign with the Eagles. All the other guys did. So I'm not necessarily going to go in order, but to start, let's talk about Mario Goodrich. Do you look at the Eagles as if they had taken? Let's let's hypothetically say they got AJ Brown just for the first round pick. And with the third round pick, they draft Mario Goodrich from Clemson. Would that have shocked you, upset you in any way, shape, or form? No, not at all. I think that would have been a good deal. So now we have a free agent, third round caliber right, on our roster. So when people say we didn't address the cornerback, perhaps we did with this. Thoughts? Yeah, no, I agree. And I think once he started slipping with a lot of these guys, once you get in the sixth or seventh round, Teams pretty much know who's going to go where, or if they're going to get drafted. So they start making calls to agents, and they target their lists, and they, you know, they look at guys they think they can bring in, 
And uh, he was a guy, I think, once he slipped um, for whatever reason. I, he's not a big guy. Probably It's probably a size issue um, where he just doesn't have the, the size of some of these other corners that seems like. Um, yeah, taking a flyer on him as, an, as a UDFA is a, is a good deal. And I'm sure they reached out to his agent as he slipped through the sixth round and said, look, if he doesn't get drafted, we love him. And they give him a little bit more money to sign with them. So that that's probably probably what happened. And so let's, let's stick with the D back. So another guy I'm intrigued with is um, we'll we'll skip over Black. We'll go we'll go to Josh Job first. Josh, yeah. Joshua Job from Alabama, a four year starter, and then it came out that he played most of the year with a really bad turf toe. Right, and that probably is why he didn't perform well his senior year. Um, I also read that he is someone that probably can make the transition to safety. So what are your thoughts on Josh Job um, from Alabama? Yeah, physical guy. I liked him. Um, I think he was projected fourth or fifth round uh, in most mock drafts. Always liked him, watched him play a lot. Got toasted a couple times in the uh, SEC championship, and I think in the national championship game he gave up a long touchdown. But like you said, he was hurt. Um, all year, and, and he's gutty to try to tough it out. They didn't really have much depth behind him this year. But I think they had two freshmen at Alabama, defensive back, so he kind of had to play. Um, but I like him, and, and I could see him going to safety. I think he's fast enough. Uh, he's a really hard hitter. Um, I think he kind of maybe was even out of position playing cornerback at Alabama. I like him as a safety. So, yeah, I could see that. I, I, I think the Eagles are thinking the same thing you are, Dan. Now, what I thought about this is that – he was a fourth round projection with a sore foot. I mean, this this is this is based on his um, film from his senior year. So if right. he had if he was healthy, do you see this kid maybe going in the second round? Yeah, I think if he came out last year um, when he was healthy, he, he probably would have been the second or third round pick. Right. Um, he stayed in for another year and 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 dropped down because of the injury, but. Um, yeah, definitely a fast guy. Again, a little on the short side. I think he's like 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 but I think that would make a perfect safety, and, and maybe they're looking at him as like, you know, to replace McLeod eventually. Um, that, that, could be their, that could be their plan. But, you know, as none, again, as, not, as a UDFA, certainly worth a look. And another kid at D-back is Duke's Josh Blackwell, who of the three is definitely the, 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 the blazer of the three. A 4 3, three. 40 nice height at six feet tall does josh blockwell have any shot in your opinion with their defensive backs and what the, they threw out there last year yeah he does yeah um, you know the slot that they were throwing out there by the end of the year and you know look they stash these guys and they look at other teams you know practice squads and who they have they're always picking you know by, by week 12 guys are so banged up and, and hurt you know you're, you're picking the bottom of the barrel with these guys so if you can sign these guys and even even if you don't keep them, you get to look at them. Maybe, you know, uh, the Giants signed them to their practice squad, and then you can coach them in week 13 if you need them because you've already seen them, had them in camp. So, um, yeah, all these guys are young, athletic. You know, some are more physical than others. They can all run. Um, you know, so I, I think it's worth, you know, especially at, at, you know, just taking an undrafted free agent and bringing them into camp for reps and taking a look and see what you have, then he's definitely worth it. You know, he played in the, the ACC, which they, they throw the ball a ton. So we had a ton of action. Um, so they know what they have in him. So, yeah, I think they like him a lot. All right. So the, th the three guys I really want to have you highlight are Carson Strong, followed by Kennedy Brooks, followed by Britton Covey. And then we'll wrap, we'll wrap it up with those three, unless there's anyone else that you want to discuss as well. But those three, starting with Carson Strong. Okay, Carson Strong is the third guy they brought in. Um, he's going to be a training camp arm, but he's got a chance to stick and to be on the practice squad. Um, we talked about him, I believe, before. Maybe we were off air and we talked about him. But, um, yeah, we really liked him. I really liked him. I, I watched him play a little bit in college. I, 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 For some reason, I watched Nevada games. Um, but I really like him, just his mental makeup and his body language. He seems like he's a leader, a uh, really good arm. And we talked about him being just just a good, strong pocket passer and a kid that has a chance as a backup in the NFL, you know, and, and he's cheap. So, you know, another another guy you don't have to pay a lot of money. And, you know, he's certainly better than Nate Sudfeld. 
I would think even even now. So. Well, you know what's funny? I I read an article from SI.com. I think it was uh, you know uh, a few days before the draft, and they were they ranked him as their number one quarterback in this draft. So yeah, not surprising. As we said, the, the quarterback draft was weak. You know, and that was proven out because Pickett went, was the only quarterback picked in the first round, and uh, Ritter went late, and Willis went late, and Corral went late. So all those guys weren't, and, and Howell went, I think, in the sixth round or seventh round. Maybe right. so he went late. So, so yeah, you know, you got a guy for nothing basically coming in, and you'll see what he can do. It's, it's preseason. He's going to play. Uh, if he sticks around, he'll play the third and fourth, or maybe there's only three preseason games now. Three. He'll play the third preseason game for sure, and he'll get time in the other two. And, uh, yeah, why not? I mean, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You can't have enough quarterbacks as the Eagles like to uh, say they're a quarterback factory. We'll see what happens. Right. And, <laughs> and I believe the gentleman we're going to talk about now, Kennedy Brooks, was fifth or sixth in your running back running backs ranking when we did our offensive show. So yes. what are the Eagles getting in Kennedy Brooks? And is he a practice squad guy or is he someone that could somehow sneak into the rotation? Probably a practice squad guy. I mean, I think they're pretty set at their running backs unless somebody develops a injury that's going to keep them out for the year. But then I think if that happens, they'll probably look to a better. Or is a malcontent over a contract and is trade bait. Right, right. Um, yeah, because they didn't resign. They didn't extend Miles Sanders. Correct. So, um, they like. I know they love Gainwell and they love Boston Scott. Uh, Boston Scott seems like he's been here for 10 years already. He's Darren Sproles Jr. Yeah, exactly. And Kennedy Brooks is, is not a big guy either. They like the, their backs are all around the same size. Uh, I liked him in college. I think he's he's not doesn't do everything great. He's not a breakaway speed guy, but he also doesn't lose a lot of, a lot of yardage. He's a, he's a fall forward kind of guy. Um, you know, he, he can run inside a little bit. He's not going to get you know get the corner every time, but I think he's a solid, dependable back. He wasn't used a ton at Oklahoma, so he's got a lot of tread left um, on his tires. And and again, another guy who can't really go wrong bringing him in. You see what you have, and if he disappoints, then you caught him. Um, but I think he'll stick. I think he can be a good practice squad guy, and if he needs to step in in the pinch, I think he'll be fine. And a guy that intrigued me, because I watched, I, I, I started watching all the film I could find on these UDFAs via YouTube, uh, Britton Covey, a uh, 5'8 water bug from Utah. I believe he was like a slot receiver. And I'm telling you, if Britton Covey was on uh, the 2010 Patriots, he would turn into um, Julian Edelman. Do you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. He's, mm -hmm. he's that kind of player. And he is an electrifying punt returner. I think he had five punt returns for a touchdown, one in the bowl game. Right. So tell us about Brittany Covey, Britton Covey, other than what I've just said, <laughs> if I stole your thunder. No, uh, I like him too. I think he's pretty one dimensional. Um, you know, he's not really going to be an outside receiver guy, even though he's got the speed, he's just too small for that. Right. So he's kind of a slot guy and, and they, you know, they're going to, Jalen Rieger will probably be gone after this year. I don't need to keep him around. So maybe you can step in for him and he's kind of a specialist. Like maybe even you use Kobe as like a gadget guy on, on, on offense, but, uh, you know, he definitely has a future as a punt returner and you don't need to be a big guy. Yet. So being smaller as a punt returner in the NFL is a benefit. So, you know, Got to make sure his hands are good. Obviously, can run. Um, but returning punts in the NFL, those guys are a lot bigger than the guys in college running at you. So, being good in college as a punt returner doesn't necessarily translate. But he'll get a shot. And uh, again, at that spot, as an undrafted guy coming in, yeah, he's got a shot to stick. Um, I would, you know, because he is so little, it wouldn't surprise me if he got hurt a little bit and banged up in training camp. But another guy you can stash on your practice squad if you have to, and and. You know, if you, even if he gets signed somewhere else, you can go back to him and pick him up. And you have film on him and you know what he's like. Um, but I'm sure this year they're going to stick with Rager returning punts. But, um, you know, Kobe's a guy that, you know, can flash in training camp. We'll see. All right. So before we close out, is there anyone else on this list that you really want to talk about before we close our show? I just like the guy Ellis from Idaho. Really big guy. Um, same about the same size as Davis, act, actually. But uh, he was talked about in, as like a later round pick in some mocks, and he uh slipped you know slipped out of the draft. So that was a good pickup. I like him. Um, the kid from Miami, Williams, offensive lineman, really big guy. Um, he's a, 
going to be a project, but he played a lot of football for Miami this year. And uh, they, they again, played in the ACC. So I watched, got to watch them a lot. Um, he's got a chance. He can be coached up a little bit. Again, another guy who they can stash if they need and, and provide some depth, if they, uh, especially if they get rid of Dillard. I'm sure they're trying to trade him or trying to trying to get something for him at this point. Right. Um, yeah, so those are the guys I would look for. They're going to bring in more guys as we get into training camp, I'm sure. All right, so Dan, it's funny we uh, it's the draft is like Christmas. Christmas comes <laughs> and goes, and it's like all that hype, all the commercials, all the gifts. It's over. That's how we feel about the draft. We we did our two lead up draft shows, which were really exciting, and and again, I really encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to watch part one and part two. You can go and find it, Heat Ratios YouTube page. Scroll down a bit, and you'll see Dan's little section, College Football Ring Zone. He nailed so much of what took place in this draft. So Dan knows his stuff. So Dan, as always, thank you. And share with the viewers what your future looks like um, as far as shows go, College Football Ring Zone. Yeah, so we're going to take a little break. Uh, college football is kind of on hiatus. There's a lot of official visits coming up on recruiting, so – Spring practice is over for all schools. Um, fall practice picks up in like uh, July. So we'll do a show like maybe mid-July towards the end of July um, and then talk about some of the other issues in college football. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's talk of, uh, which I just saw yesterday, that uh, Gene Smith, the athletic director at Iowa State, was saying that college football should have its own governing body. College football should leave the NCAA. NCAA should govern all the other schools or all the other sports, but college football should be on its own. And I think there's going to be some talk about that as well through the summer. So that's something we can hit on. And, and NIL has really changed that. Um, there's so much opportunity for these guys. And, and it's changed recruiting as well and transfer rules. So it's a very fluid situation right now. And uh, with Emmert leaving, I think is a good thing for everybody. Um, there's going to be even more uh, fluidity throughout the summer with uh, with college football. So we'll try to do a show in July and, and then um, – mid to late August and do like kind of a college football preview show focus and highlight on a couple different players. Um, I just saw today a mock draft for 2023 already. So there's some players there that we want, definitely want to discuss and highlight and look at through the uh, college football season. And then we'll, we'll get back to doing a show on a regular basis uh, next fall. All right. Okay. All right. So on behalf of the dance, this has been college football ring zone. We are part of the heat ratio sports network. Again, I encourage you to check out our YouTube page and take a look at all our wonderful programming. Uh, it's just an amazing network to work for. And ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful weekend and give your mothers some love. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Well and said. Thank you. Take care, everyone.